everyone. Did everyone hear what he just said yesterday? <laughs> First off, a big congrats to everyone in the U.S. on wrapping up election season. Hey, look what happened. Is this crazy? Here's hoping the new leadership brings some positive changes for everyone. Now, speaking of elections, we're about to see some major leadership shakeups in the MCU, too. Coming up in Captain America Brave New World in 2025, Thaddeus Thunderbolt Ross will make his debut as the newly elected U.S. president. And on a local level, in Daredevil Born Again, Matt Murdock will be dealing with none other than Wilson Fisk, a.k.a. Kingpin, who's gunning for the position of New York City's mayor. It's shaping up to be a serious political drama that hits surprisingly close to home with today's political landscape. Marvel Studios has always been great at weaving real-world issues and political messages into its stories, wrapping them in powerful narratives that resonate with audiences. From the very beginning, Iron Man threw in some hard-hitting lines that felt like a critique of government and corporate power. I never got to say goodbye to my father. There's questions that I would ask him. I would ask him how he felt about what this company did, if he was conflicted, if he ever had doubts. Or maybe he was every inch the man we all remember from the newsreels. This is the key to the future. I saw young Americans killed by the very weapons I created to defend them and protect them. And I saw that I had become part of a system that is comfortable with zero accountability. I am Iron Man. So what messages is the MCU trying to deliver with its political undertones, especially now when politics is such a hot topic everywhere? Before we dive in, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Here on this channel, we talk all things MCU, superheroes, and anything else that keeps us entertained and inspired. And just a note, this video isn't about taking any political stance. None of this is meant to target anyone or spark debate. It's just a fun look at how the MCU mirrors real world events in its storytelling. All right, let's jump in. It's no surprise that artists often express their political views through their work. Whether it's through painting, music, or movies, creators have a way of using art to make powerful statements. In Marvel Studios, they've definitely mastered this. Politics in the MCU might seem unexpected to some, but honestly, it adds so much depth to the stories. Over the years, Marvel has dropped some truly memorable messages into their movies. And some of them, they're pretty profound. Let's break down a few key examples. First up, Black Panther takes on racism head on. Eric Killmonger Stevens, played by Michael B. Jordan, is one of those villains who isn't simply evil for the sake of it. He's a product of a broken system, abandoned in America, and left to face harsh realities on his own. These experiences filled him with anger and a need for revenge. In a way, Killmonger shows us how the pain and isolation of discrimination can turn even the most innocent child into someone consumed by bitterness. Then there's Iron Man, one of the earliest films in the MCU and still one of my favorites for its message. When Tony Stark finds out his family's company, Stark Industries is making weapons that harm innocent people, it's like a wake up call. In the film, Tony says he regrets not having the chance to say goodbye to his father. And that line really drives home the emotional weight of his decision to turn Stark Industries away from weapons manufacturing. It's a powerful critique of the arms industry and military accountability with Tony deciding that being rich and successful isn't worth it if it means causing harm. Moving forward, the Winter Soldier from Captain America film series took inspiration from real life events, like Edward Snowden's NSA revelations. Black Widow exposes S.H.I.E.L.D.'s secrets to the public, which is a lot like what Snowden did. By revealing everything, she shines a light on government surveillance and the importance of transparency. In the movie, S.H.I.E.L.D. was Scan secretly collecting information on phones, people without their consent, PDAs, highlighting a whatever. very real debate about privacy versus security. Beyond these bigger messages, the MCU also tackles social issues. Captain Marvel is a great example, where Carol Danvers fights against sexism and shows that women can be just as powerful as men. Her journey also critiques the dangers of propaganda. After being misled by the Kree, she realizes that she's been fighting the wrong enemy shifting her mission to defend the Skrulls. The MCU stories aren't just about superheroes saving the day. They touch on topics like mental health, like Tony Stark's struggles in Iron Man 3. Do you have PTSD? I don't think so. Are you, are you going completely mental? I can... 
workers' rights in Spider-Man Homecoming, and the everyday grind of working people. Strong. I brought in a whole new crew. These guys have a family. I have a family. And even victim blaming like Jessica Jones's powerful message on trauma. I didn't need you to save me, except when you had a gun pointed at your head. So it's not just mindless action. There's a lot going on under the surface that reflects real world issues. And this approach has only expanded with series like Agatha All Along, which cleverly ties in themes of diversity and historical reflection. Marvel doesn't just tell stories. They've created a mirror for our own world, bringing attention to issues we all face in a way that's both entertaining and thought provoking. With all the buzz around politics lately, it seems like Marvel Studios is tapping right into that energy with its 2025 lineup, bringing us shows and movies that have some very real world themes woven in. One standout, Captain America Brave New World, hitting theaters on February 14th, 2025. This movie picks up where Sam Wilson, now Captain America, left off as he steps up to carry Steve Rogers' legacy. And as hinted in the trailer, it looks like the story will be steeped in political intrigue, giving us a fresh spin on the MCU. A huge shift in Brave New World is that the US now has a new president, none other than Thaddeus Thunderbolt Ross, this time played by Harrison Ford. In the story, Ross wins the presidency and seems set on pulling Captain America back under a more traditional military role. I want to make another run at making Captain America an official military position with Sam Wilson as his key player. But Sam's got some serious reservations. He's taken on the Captain America title, sure, but the pressure of stepping into this role, especially under a political agenda, definitely makes him pause. Casting Harrison Ford as President Ross was a smart move. Ford already has a bit of presidential experience under his belt from Air Force One, so he's likely to bring just the right amount of grit and authority to the role. And it's clear Sam will be navigating a tricky geopolitical landscape. Tensions between the US and Japan appear to be a factor, alongside ongoing chaos around the Super Soldier program. These elements combine to bring a new Hulk to the stage, Red Hulk. This Hulk isn't just another version of Bruce Banner. This one's created through a mix of Super Soldier serum and gamma radiation, with some DNA from She-Hulk herself, Jennifer Walters. The interesting twist? Walter's transformation lets her keep her personality he intact. That. A stark contrast to the original Hulk's more uncontrollable side. And then there's the kicker. President Ross himself transforms into a Red Hulk. In the comics, Ross is Red Hulk. But there are times when multiple Red Hulks exist, so who knows? The film might even give us a few more of these Red Titans. It's all setting up for some big time political tension and power plays. To add another layer, Isaiah Bradley, the first black super soldier, is making a return. If you remember him from The Falcon and The Winter Soldier, Isaiah's story shed light on the harsh realities of being used and then abandoned by the government. His backstory exposed the darker side of how he was turned into a super soldier, only to be left with no recognition or support, leaving him to face a rough life alone. So with Brave New World, Marvel's diving into some serious themes around power, legacy, and government agendas. What do you think Marvel's trying to say with this one? Just three weeks after Captain America Brave New World hits theaters, MCU fans will be diving right back into the political intrigue on Disney Plus with Daredevil Born Again. This series promises to be a perfect way to continue Matt Murdock's journey in the MCU, with the return of Charlie Cox as Daredevil and the ever-intense Vincent D'Onofrio as Kingpin. Of course, my main focus here is Kingpin. After making his debut in the MCU through Hawkeye, Kingpin is back to stir things up. He's already entangled with other popular MCU characters like Clint Barton and Maya Lopez, but now he's setting his sights on something bigger, political power. In Born Again, we'll see Kingpin actively running for mayor of New York City, a plotline taken straight from the comics that Marvel Studios is smartly leaning into, especially with all the current buzz around politics. As a crime lord, Kingpin has always run his operations from the shadows. But if he gains political control in New York, things could escalate quickly for some of our heroes. Watching Kingpin's maneuver through the political world is bound to give us a clever look at the darker side of politics. 
using satire to highlight shady practices in the real world. Daredevil Born Again will be packed with these subtle jabs, encouraging us to think about the messages underneath the action. But remember, it's all fiction. The series is ultimately a work of art, meant to reflect themes rather than represent any kind of reality. One thing's for sure, this series might just leave us all wondering what would happen if someone like Kingpin were to rise to power in the real world. So who's rooting for Kingpin in this election? Or maybe not. Following the finale of Daredevil Born Again, Marvel is dropping a movie that pulls together some of the most overlooked, misunderstood, and complex characters in the MCU. Thunderbolts, with Yelena Belova leading the charge, this film, set for release on May 2nd, 2025, brings to the forefront Marvel's anti-heroes, the ones who don't quite fit the mold of your classic superhero. Yelena, after years of operating in the shadows, is ready for a fresh start. She's become disillusioned with the world of espionage, questioning her actions, and looking to redefine herself. Alongside her, we'll see familiar faces like Bucky Barnes, Alexei Shostakov, John Walker, Ava Starr, and Taskmaster, all characters who have operated on the fringes, never quite fitting in with the mainline Avengers. And let's not forget the enigmatic Valentina Allegra de Fontaine, whose quiet but powerful influence has been shaping events across the MCU, perhaps as the government's secret puppet master. What's especially intriguing about Thunderbolts is that it dives deep into the political world that Captain America Brave New World sets up, particularly with Thaddeus Ross as the new president. Rumor has it that Val has even secured Avengers Tower for her own covert operations. This would make sense given her shady history and penchant for pulling strings behind the scenes. She's gathered a team of anti-heroes, likely orchestrating events to draw more powerful allies to her side. And then there's Sentry. Oh, oh, no. Marvel's powerhouse with a dangerously unpredictable streak. While we don't yet know the extent of his role in the MCU, the fact that he's introduced in Thunderbolts suggests he could be a game changer, adding an extra layer of tension to an already intense storyline. With Yelena, Bucky, and the rest of the Thunderbolts crew, we're bound to see some sharp critiques of power, government, yeah, and so. heroism itself. Someone wants us gone. It's hard to imagine this movie not touching on political themes and delivering moments that will be both thought-provoking and darkly funny. Thunderbolts is definitely going to keep us on the edge of our seats. So what do you all think about the 2025 slate of MCU movies and shows with so much political background? Do you think these storylines are reflecting the current political climate in the US? Drop your thoughts in the comments. I'd love to hear what you think. If you've made it this far, it's clear we share a deep love for the MCU and superheroes, especially when it comes to digging into the layers behind the storylines. Make sure to hit that subscribe button so our discussions can keep going. And if you like the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends so we can make these conversations even more fun. Just a quick note, this video is just my opinion, and I'm not trying to offend or accuse anyone. We're all in the realm of fiction here, right? Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.